Today, we will show you how to use the wet in wet and wet in dry techniques in a watercolor by looking closely at this tiny still life by Sonja Dwinger. Hi everyone, and welcome to the Rijksmuseum's very own creative channel, Rijks Creative. This season, we will show you everything you need to know about watercolors, inks, and even blueprints. So grab your brushes and let's go. This is our teacher for today, Peter. Hi. And of course, our expert from the Rijksmuseum, Jane Turner. Hello. You've got a very small reference in your hand, Peter. Are we going to paint this small? Yes, yeah, so as you can see, the original is really small and I have been copying it, copying it, interpreting it uh, in this same size, um, which of course is possible. But I thought to show the technique, the, the special aspects of the technique and also for the camera, uh, it is better to, uh, to show it in a bigger size. So I decided to make it in a bigger size. And what is so very special about the technique is the dialogue, the interplay between control and serendipity. So you have, the artist has to have control in order to convey the still life. You have a pot of brushes. But by using such a wet technique, you allow for unexpected um, effects. And there's a long tradition of that, from Leonardo to Guercino to Alexander Cousins making blot drawings to Jackson Pollock with his paintings. You have blots, and then they turn it into something. Here, you start with something controlled and then let the medium take over. Okay, let's do it. So I'm going to make a watercolors painting today, inspired by this original here, done by Sonja Dwinger and to make it more clear and visible. For everyone, I have this jar with brushes here as an inspiration for the drawing, uh, the painting I'm going to make. Okay, first I'm going to make a sketch with pencil to have an idea about all the elements being in the right position. So, um, of course, the proportions have to be right, so that is why I draw this line and then the biggest elements of the painting I'm going to put down as a pencil sketch just to know for myself where all the most important things have their place in the painting. Yeah, so the biggest surfaces of color I'm drawing here, not all of them, of course, because they have to be put down with the brush. And it's just to give an idea. Okay, some brushes in the jar. So the image is made of rather big surfaces of different colors, but also some lines. I think the lines are quite important for the composition. So. I'm going to put them in here, more or less. Okay, and there are some lines here. Diagonals, yeah, because most of them, most of the lines and the surfaces are horizontal or vertical, but some are diagonal. And I think that is quite important to know where these are. Okay, so I think at this point, I can start using the watercolors since the most important elements are there now, shown in the pencil. I start with the watercolors now. It's a very interesting material and that is of course um, the character of the material makes the result so very interesting and also, is the reason that you cannot really copy a watercolor painting because it's always different, yeah? Because the water takes its own way. Because as Jane told us, it's a combination of what the painter wants and what the water wants. So the result is always different and that makes it so very interesting. I use some sepia here. 
And the point in this uh, painting is that the colors, of course, are not that bright. So we really have to take care that the colors are mixed, not too bright. A lot of water, of course, like always. Some blue. This is ultramarine that I'm taking here for the big blue surface here. As you can see, this size is really suited for working in a free and not too precise way. Always also the size of the brush is really suited. An important vertical line here on the side. And as you can see here, yeah, when the surface is wet, the paint takes its own direction and does whatever it likes. So that's the reason why I have this cloth. Very, very important to change things afterwards. Yeah, it's a kind of eraser, more or less, in this technique. A bit more water. It should not be too dry. And the interesting thing, of course, is when certain colors and certain surfaces start to interfere with each other when the water runs. So it mixes really with each other, which is really beautiful in most of the cases. So it's quite unclear, in fact, the background that is used here in this original. It's not quite clear of which it exists, what objects there are, not really objects visible. It's just a mixture of all kinds of surfaces, lines, quite unclear, in fact, what it really is. But it's not important at all. It's an interesting composition of all these different colors and surfaces and lines. Rather abstract, in fact. Let me see. Yes, more or less like this. Some more red in here to make it purple, purplish, not really purple. And then, of course, the white spots in the painting are really very important because there are different spots that are not covered in color. And as always in watercolor paintings, these are really important and they should be cherished and being handled very carefully because when they are gone, they are really gone and you don't get them back. And it gives air and light in the composition. Of course, the jar with brushes is the main element here, but nevertheless, all the other surfaces, all the other parts, add to the composition, of course. But first, I think I have to pay some attention to the jar with brushes now. Yeah, some matter lake here, but not too bright. I mix it with some other colors in order to not make it too bright. Some ultramarine to add to it. And I hope it will mix with the red now. Yeah, it does. A bit more of the bright red here. I think that could be interesting. I should also use some ochre because there are some spots here where it is used. Let me see the brush here. There's some ochre here. And also here. Okay, as you can see, with this big brush and with a lot of water, of course, it is um, done quite quickly, in fact, yeah, to make a kind of first idea, first stage of the composition. Okay, the table. 
also a reddish color. And there's also a kind of line here, diagonal line. So as you probably can see, it would be really an illusion to make a real exact copy of the original because every time you would try this, the result would be really different because you cannot really completely steer the process, which is good and which makes it really interesting and which makes this a technique that I really love to do. This surface can be a bit bigger, as I see now. Some more sepia for the background here. The interesting thing too is that you can cover all the surfaces where you have been painting already, you can cover them again and again to make them darker, to make the color more intense. I think I have to pay some attention to the brushes now. These are quite intense blue. Nearly the most intense color in the whole painting here. So when it's too bright, you can mix it on the paper to make it less blue. In this case, a brush there and one, another one standing here. The table. When some surfaces would be too dark, like here, you can add some water and dab with the cloth. And you will see that a lot of the color can be taken off. The surface can be made much lighter. So it is always possible to change what you did. Not completely, because as I told you, when the white is gone, you can't, you can't, you won't get it back. The jar can be somewhat redder. A bit too much. Okay. Nice red surface here. Really beautiful in the foreground. And there's also a color here, which, which is not really clear what kind of color this is. Yellowish, but not too strong. More or less like this. Some purple, beautiful combination with the brownish colors. Really nice. And there's also some purple here in the upper part. So I'm working on a watercolors block, as it is called. All the sheets are glued together, which makes them stay smooth during the painting, because all the water, of course, has to be absorbed by the paper. So a bit darker up here with the combination of sepia and ultramarine and some red. That's nice. So this is a, um, a watercolors painting with really rough brush strokes, as you can see. Um, most of the elements are not painted too fine or too precise, but of course sometimes here and there it has to be done precise and detailed because otherwise it will just be one blur which is of course not the idea. As you can see the cloth is really quite essential. 
there should be a white line here. So I try to get some of the paint off here. So as you can see, when you put water on it, it still can be removed partly, not completely. A bit darker there. That's better. Some quite undefined color here. Sometimes it's quite hard to see what color has been used because it's so thin, there is so much water in it. It's really difficult to see. It looks grayish. Um, as you can see, I look at the original quite intense. Of course, you can choose to take your own object like the jar with brushes here. It's much more difficult since you have to translate that from three-dimensional to two-dimensional. So that is why it's nice to look at the original. Yeah? It's flat already. I've been just putting this here to show the inspiration for the drawing of Sonja Dwinger and also for my uh, the painting I mean and also my painting of course but I'm not really trying to use this as an example. Okay, let's have a look. The brushes. In fact, these are the only objects that are really quite defined in the whole composition. So they can be a bit darker and clearer as they are now. And also the jar can be a bit clearer. This might be a bit too bright. So for a lot of people, it's quite frightening to use a technique that you don't completely control. Yeah, because it's difficult enough, of course, to try to get on the paper what you want. And then when, when the water has its, its own way and its own will, of course, it gives you the feeling that you are not in control which you aren't completely, of course. So this is a matter of practicing. Yeah, on a certain moment, you will feel that, in fact, it helps you yeah, to get looser in your way of painting, not too tight, uptight, and um, to make a more spontaneous painting, in fact. But it takes some time yeah, and it takes really some practice. So when it would not work the first time, don't despair. You just need some more time to practice. And in the end, I'm sure it will work. Most of the surfaces, most of the colors are in the composition now. Just looking at what I should emphasize, what parts should be somewhat clearer than they are now. And maybe some lines down here a bit stronger. You made it look easy, Peter. Any last tips? Yeah, so 
What I think is really important is don't be too uptight yeah? using this technique. Let the water do its work and don't be afraid of losing control. That's the most important thing, I think, with watercolors. Thank you very much and see you next time. Okay, bye.